Hey guys and welcome back. So this will be another essential video about how you can install a Zabbix proxy on your server virtual machine or Raspberry Pi or whatever. So if you decided that you actually do need a Zabbix proxy, maybe for that distributed environment monitoring, maybe you want to offload your Zabbix server, maybe you just want to keep like uh, SNMP devices for the proxy one, then database monitoring for the proxy two, or whatsoever, there could be like plenty of reasons. So how can you actually install the Zabbix proxy? And for this testing setup, I have a Zabbix 6.2, and uh, we have Oracle Linux uh, up and running, Oracle Linux 8, and I have a Zabbix server and a database running from, um, running from the Docker containers, and we actually can install the Zabbix proxy from the packages. So first thing first, we, I will go to the root directory here. So you should go to the Zabbix.com, then click on the green download button. And this is the place where you can get information how to install a Zabbix server, which is not the same as installing the Zabbix proxy, but again, it's going to be very similar. So first of all, pick the version. And remember that the proxy must have the same major version as uh, the Zabbix server. So if let's say we have, in our case, I have a Zabbix 6.2 alpha 2, which means that I need to install the Zabbix proxy from the branch 6.2. If I will install it from 4.0, 5.0, 6.0, it will simply not gonna work. Then choose the operating system for which you actually wanna install the proxy. And in my case, again, it is uh, Oracle Linux 8. Then the database. Uh, in this case, database is not relevant. We will need a database for the proxy, but again, this setting is uh, has nothing to do with the proxy installation. So more or less we are set. So we have a 6.2 major version, Oracle Linux version eight. And then we need just the first line, this one. So we need to add a repository uh, with our from our Zabbix for the 6.2 release. And uh, let's do it like this. So I'll just copy paste copy paste this line like this and uh, also you see I already had uh, the Zabbix 6.0 so repository so we will need to delete it and uh, DNF clean DNF clean all uh, just to make sure that uh, yum make cache to make sure that uh, we don't have a cached repository of the Zabbix 6.0 that I had previously installed on this virtual machine. So this will take a couple of, uh, I don't know, probably seconds or minutes. So just in case, I'm going to fast forward this. There we go. So we made a cache for our yum repositories. And then what we can do is just yum search for Zabbix dash proxy. And we'll should see a couple of outputs. So there we go. We have three potential options that we could go with. Zabbix Proxy MySQL, Zabbix Proxy Postgres SQL, and a Zabbix Proxy SQL Lite. What's the difference? First and second one, well, it's pretty obvious, like it's choosing like either it's gonna be the MySQL database engine or a Postgres SQL, and then the proxy, uh, proxy also has to have a database, so it will be working on a MySQL or on a Postgres, but all the database configuration, like, installing the database, creating the database, granting permissions for some sort of user is going to be still on uh, your side, your responsibility, just like you previously did for the Zabbix server, like there are commands, create database Zabbix, uh, so it could be like Zabbix proxy and stuff like that. In my case, I already have a Zabbix server up and running, including the database, but uh, from the Docker containers. And to make it uh, different and easier, I will use the proxy SQLite because uh, those would be just a couple of extra commands to create a database in a container. So I will avoid that and I will use the SQLite option. And the greatest benefit for the SQLite Zabbix proxy is probably that it's very lightweight and it is perfectly suitable if you want to install the Zabbix proxy on some very small environments. Let's say you want to use the Zabbix uh, proxy on the Raspberry Pi, installing a MySQL or a Postgres, which are pretty extensive database engines, um, might not be really required or needed. But the SQLite is a very small database engine, we can still call it like that, which is one single file based. And it also does not require us to create some sort of the database like we have here. So create database, Zabbix character set and grant some permissions 
all of that will be happening automatically and I'm going to show you how in uh, just a minute. So first of all, before we start, we actually need to install this Zabbix dash proxy dash SQLite three on our Oracle virtual machine. So click yes. And you see installation size is just 6.1 megs, which is pretty small. And again, if we would be using my SQL, that's pretty, pretty tough. Like I think my SQL eight is around like 400 or 500 megs currently. So we install the Zabbix proxy SQL light. And uh, let's check the config file, the config file as for any Zabbix component is located in Etsy Zabbix, then we should look for the Zabbix, uh, not the server in this case, zabbixproxy.conf. What kind of options do we have here? Proxy mode, this is very important setting for your proxy installation. Zero means that it is active, one means that it is passive. What's the difference if we have a zero? then just like with a Zabbix agent, the proxy is initiating connection to the Zabbix server, requesting the configuration, getting the configuration, does the monitoring and sends the data back. So basically all communication network wise is coming from the Zabbix proxy to the Zabbix server. And with a passive mode, it's vice versa. The server is initiating connections to the proxy, server is sending the config to the proxy, server is polling the proxy for the values that it has collected previously. Zero active mode is definitely recommended performance wise, and it makes much more sense. Even if you want to monitor some distributed environments to which um, maybe you or your clients would not really want to allow incoming connections. So we don't need it. In this case, we select active mode, which is a default, and we don't have any incoming connections in that environment, only outgoing from the proxy to the Zabbix server. So the choice is up for you, but uh, I would definitely suggest to go with an active mode. Then what else? Um, server. So this is IP or the DNS name of your Zabbix server. That's it, right? So we have a Zabbix server here. Uh, I think the 127001 should work fine for me. Again, it's, it is a question because I have a Zabbix server up and running from the Docker containers. So it's not like exactly a local host, but still is. So I think this should work. In your case, if you're installing the proxy on some remote machine, then you just specify the IP address of your Zabbix server. Host name. Host name, remember this, Zabbix proxy. We will touch it later on when we will finish with our Zabbix uh, proxy config file. So this is a thing to remember when we're creating a proxy in, uh, in the front end. And what else? Listen port. I must change this again because I have a Zabbix server running on the same virtual machine where I'm going to be installing the proxy. And the, Zab and the port for the Zabbix server is the same, 10051. That's why obviously I'm not going to be able to also start the proxy in the same port. That's why I am changing the listening port of the proxy to 10061. For you, if you're installing the proxy on a dedicated machine, this setting is not required. And uh, more or less, that's it to just get it up and running. So I will systemctl uh, systems. I'm oh, sorry, we forgot the most important thing. So go back to the proxy uh, config file database and just scroll back, scroll back for some database settings. DB name and uh, DB host is localhost, DB name, uh, Zabbix proxy. So for SQLite path to the database file must be provided. Remember I said that SQLite is creating a database automatically. In case of MySQL or Postgres, we would have to do this typing with create database, Zabbix proxy, characters, set stuff like that. For uh, SQLite, what is enough to do? Just add a directory, TMP, Zabbix proxy. And in this directory, so the Zabbix proxy file is gonna actually be our database file for this proxy. Right now we can save quit and systemctl start Zabbix proxy, so many typos, there we go. We can actually check the log file for Zabbix proxy.log. And here we can see that it's actually started, but uh, everything is good using configuration file, cannot open um, the database because it did not exist at the first start of the Zabbix proxy. Then it is creating the database, created with the current version like this and like that, required mandatory version matches and started all the processes. So we're good with the database and we can go back and check 
for the TMP. There is our database file, SQLite. And uh, we have just one problem. Cannot obtain the configuration data from the server at localhost address and empty string received. There is just one reason. Uh, we forgot to do, well, we not forgot, we just still have to do one thing. So we need to go to the front end and this is the place where we actually need to add some additional um, setting for the proxy to work. And it is done in a section administration proxies. So only a super admin is able to configure this. And uh, what we need to do is create a proxy. Proxy name must match case sensitive identically as we have a host name in our proxy config file. And remember I told you that we're gonna need it later and the host name, here it is, is Zabbix proxy with a capital Z. So proxy name like this, it must match with a setting as you have in your proxy config file. Otherwise, it's not gonna work. Proxy mode active, proxy address, we can keep it blank, description, we can keep it blank. And uh, encryption, well, if you want it, uh, if you're interested about encryption, I have a video about it. So just search for Zabbix encryption and most likely you will find my video. Um, that's it, proxy name, Zabbix proxy, click add. Last seen, never. And hopefully after uh, I will reload a config cache on a Zabbix server, then I will reload a config cache on a Zabbix proxy. And hopefully then we'll see the last scene as uh, some actual number. So to reload my Zabbix server config cache, I need to type this command, Zabbix server minus capital R config cache reload successfully. And then I'm just gonna restart uh, Zabbix proxy like this restarted and there we go the last scene changed to the four second and when everything is fine even if we don't have any hosts monitored by this proxy this number should not grow like infinitely because the proxy is sending a heartbeat to the Zabbix server and also communicating to get some additional stuff like um, um, tasks for the proxy so this should go down all the time and uh, that was it to install the proxy itself. And if you want to monitor some sort of hosts through this proxy, you just have to find this post, this host, let's say the Windows YouTube, and select that it should be monitored by our Zabbix proxy. Then just click update. There we go. And we see that it is monitored through this proxy. We can go to the administration proxies. Um, there should be visible that there is one, there we go, one host monitored. And uh, that's it. Of course, you have to configure the agent to communicate with the proxy, not with the server, but that's again a different story. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. Of course, that supports, supports me the most. And uh, see you later in the next videos. Thank you and goodbye.